Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lean Toss-Up Call of Duty League podcast. My name is Robert, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, CDL Metrics. We're coming to you a bit early this week because we both had stuff going on later this week, but we're, we're getting it out of the way on Monday, and so some of the lines might change a little bit before before the game start happened on Friday, but we'll do our best. How are you doing on this Monday night, CDL Metrics? Yeah. Yeah, doing well. It is a little odd to record this early in the week. We literally had games yesterday that we were watching. Uh, A lot of pretty convincing series over this weekend. Not a ton of drama or news uh, to talk about here, but... But yeah, happy to join you on a Monday. Uh, Yeah, you, I know, are a political analyst, so Super Tuesday is coming up tomorrow for you, so that's a big deal. And for me, I'm going to a bachelor party starting on Wednesday in Las Vegas. So my Wednesday through Monday is booked solid with having fun with the buddies. So we'll see how that goes. Home of the Las Vegas Legion, as we all know. So I'll I'll stop by the team facility that doesn't exist there and say hi to everybody. But, But yeah. I don't know if I'm going to catch any of the games this weekend, but still, we'll talk about them nonetheless. You're going to go minus 500, you're not, but that's okay. You Actually, here's what I'd love to see. Can you go into, because you're going to be in Vegas, and I'm assuming maybe some of your friends are going to be gambling at some sort of casino. That's a guess. I don't know. But if they are, I would love to know if you can actually bet on esports in one of those sports books. Because no one, I've I know people who've gone there, but I've never known anybody who says, "Oh yeah, they have Call of Duty lines or League of Legends or CS:GO." I've never so that if you could say that, that'd be a really cool fact to to know if you can bet on esports. Yeah, and sports yeah, books. I'll report back. I'll I'll definitely report back. My initial guess would be that most books don't have esports but maybe we'll find one that does but yeah i imagine most of our time will be preoccupied with probably blackjack tables betting on college basketball all that fun stuff yeah i'll report back though makes sense news of the week there is no news we don't have anything right here we don't have anything there's no real news nothing really happened of note there's no roster changes there's no new map updates yeah not there doesn't always have to be news now that being said we're cursed now because we're doing this on monday and wednesday it's going to be like yeah the cdl's folding everybody so so just we're i know we're cursing it now but yeah anyways speed running through the season so yeah a, a, as your uh, graph here is pointing out lot of lot of three o's this is this is all the maps this weekend right how many maps is it this weekend this yeah. is this was Eight matches this past weekend, so yeah, a ton to to watch. But uh, yeah, six of those eight were sweeps. Some were closer than others. You see some six-point games in hard point, uh, around 11 here, a lot of round five in, in control. So yeah, some of those sweeps were very close to going to a game four, but even still, I don't know. I, I don't know about you, but it feels like this year we're getting a lot more 3-0s than usual. And maybe that just has to do with the skill gap between the teams. Um, But I I didn't run the numbers on comparing this year to previous years to see if that is true. But but yeah, at least to me, it feels like we are just getting a 3-0 like every other series, it feels. There's two points I wanted to hit on that. So I think someone actually did do a very rough number. I saw it was like 37.8%. Someone said on, on, on Twitter, I think it was scrim intel or one of the cdl accounts i can't remember they said it was like almost 40 percent basically of of series are sweeps now and i believe doug levy former guest of the show he did this analysis i think probably back last year i think his contention is that the more sweeps you have the more competitive the, the more skill based the cod is rather than random if everything's going to a game like basically when you calculate the probabilities so if every game is a coin flip i.e it's completely random then the odds of games going, the odds of series going to game five is much higher than if one team is decidedly better than the other team. So there's that element to it. However, though, I do want to point out one important fact to this is the fact that sometimes these three O's seem random, which is the important part because it's not. Oh, all if you go back to Cold War, which was I believe the last time we had such kind of pervasive three O's, it was like this team always three O's this team. This team will always there was it was pr- a lot of it was very. The, th- the three O's were very consistent, and oh, this team is a little bit better, so it's like 3-1, three, 3-2, three, except it was a lot more predictable blowouts. But this, for example, Seattle potentially was like one of the was one of the worst teams in the CDL, got absolutely destroyed by Toronto here, exception of control. 
But they got absolutely destroyed, and then they turn around and 3-0 LEG, a team that almost made it to Sunday at the Major. Subliners 3 0 Miami. Okay, that f- that's fine. That makes sense. Phase 3 0 Toronto. After they were pretty competitive with Minnesota, some of these are completely random as to this was unexpected as well. You'd expect Toronto, like Toronto is the far better team. I think they were like minus 200 to win the match, I think, or I can maybe I'm misremembering that correctly, but they were a decided favorite. Yeah, were, maybe even higher. Yeah, yeah. They were like 50 50 to sweep. I think they were plus 100 to sweep. Or no, plus 100 for the minus one and a half. So, like, decidedly a favorite, and they get swept 3-0. And this is, again, off of Toronto. This is the third match of the season. This was after Toronto had beaten them in the major twice. One in the best of one in the best of five, and then the other in the best of seven. But it only lasted five games. But this is the point where it's like, it seems like some of these are just random. It seems like some of these are, okay, it's just going to be a sweep now for some random reason. And... I don't know why that's happening that way, but it just feels to me that sweeps are fine. I'm not opposed to sweeps in any way. Sweeps can actually be quite profitable. For example, if you're like, I like this team, and this is actually what I've been doing in League of Legends a bit more now, especially because they have a lot of best of threes in the Korean and the in the Chinese leagues. If I like a team a little bit, I'm just sprinkling a little on the mon- minus one and a half. Right, so for the 2-0. And it actually has been paying off pretty well, right? And I now I don't know if that's my league model or maybe there's just something in the air this year that that sweeps are happening more. I, I don't know, but it's just it's it can be profitable. But just keep that in mind. Where you're like like for example, I liked Vegas, and I put a little bit on the minus one and a half. Should have maybe put a little bit on the minus two and a half there, right? This is the thing. It's you have to start thinking about okay, maybe this team is a lot better, and maybe if you're putting something on the minus one and a half, put something on the minus two and a half there. Maybe. This is preparedness? I don't know. It doesn't completely make sense to me. What do you think about that? Yeah, I get what what you mentioned about Doug. Like, when you have a title where the maps are a little more chaotic, what comes to mind initially is Vanguard, right? Hard points, searches. Hard points were competitive because you could blow up everything. You could contest hills very easily. You had Bocage was a map that often went to time rather than points. Same thing with search and destroy, like no trophy systems, breakable walls, it just everything opened up and it was just chaos. The best team still won a lot, but it was a lot of back and forth and a lot of game fives, what felt like. In this game, there's a complete dead silence in search and destroy if you want it. Trophy systems are back, movement is up, health is up. So yeah, in theory, like all of this should increase the skill gap meaning sweeps are more likely. I get why it's happening. I, like you, am also fine that it's happening. It, it makes watching these series much easier because you could just fly through them pretty easily. But yeah, like you said, it, it does feel like we're getting a few more random ones here and there. Like you just look at last week's like Vegas versus Boston. I would not have expected that to be a sweep one way or the other. I also liked Vegas, but thought Boston would compete and at least get one map. They almost got a couple, but still, it's a sweep. Yeah, like you mentioned, Seattle over LAG. That was a bit of a, of a surprise. I think most people saw those teams as roughly equivalent. Again, a rather close game one, but it's a sweep nonetheless. And yeah, Toronto losing in a sweep is a surprise. But if we also remember Toronto's other loss this year was a sweep to Boston back in December. I know that was forever ago, but... But yeah, even the best team in the game, when they lose, they're losing in a sweep. Just weird to see this happening. I wonder if we're just due for more game fives moving forward, just because it does feel like a little bit of an anomaly. But the sweeps that we expect to happen oftentimes do, like Atlanta, Toronto last Friday, they won pretty convincingly. That was expected. So we're still getting ones that we expect quite a bit. It's just every now and then we're getting one that comes completely out of the blue, and then that's ballooning up the total number of sweeps on the year. So we'll keep monitoring this going forward, but just thought it was interesting to point out. Yeah, agreed. Okay, Major 2 qualifiers expected wins. Subliners again leading the way at 6.39. They are just tearing it up right now. You do not want to have to face this Subliners team. Toronto, 586 phase 5.81 again a factor of phase sweeping them texas and then bringing up the rear in the top five is vegas vegas is gonna probably get a five okay we could say very likely get a five seed because there's a 
difference of almost not not three but like two there's a whole two win gap between them and the team below them but they're in really good shape there boston is boston and carolina expected to thieves and boston and carolina expected to round out the winner's bracket and then seattle lag minnesota and miami there rounding off the bottom it's yeah i'm excited for this it's i really don't know how good legion is i think they're really good I don't know how. Again, this is the question we ask, right? Because it's, okay, top four. Okay, they're the top four. What about the next team? Is the fifth, how, what's the difference between the fourth team and the fifth team? Is it close? Is it not close? That's the question we're asking. And then it's, I don't know. This is just rough for some of these teams. Like Carolina is struggling. Seattle is struggling. LEG, Minnesota, Miami. And this is the thing. And it's like, we talk about the league and the state of the league and it's just like these teams are barely trying right it's it's the teams we no one was saying seattle is going to be a top tier team sorry that's not true i i said they were going to be a top ish tier team they made a change and they maybe improved a little bit this week but it was very clear these were not the top teams it's clear these were teams five and six and, and, and seven and eight and that's exactly where they are and they're not close now vegas is surprising a little bit some teams go on some run, runs and then they they come down a bit but it's we knew these teams weren't the best teams they're showing us exactly what we thought they were going to be it's just it's hard to argue this league is doing well when it's like these are the four teams that are remotely competitive and everybody else is bad and I think that's a very hard argument to, if you're going to continue this league, to say it's been successful when it's extremely top-heavy. And you just see that from this graph every time you look at this. Yeah, one thing I do want to point out that I thought was interesting, or a few things, Toronto and Atlanta are 2-3. and three. Toronto does have a higher expected wins number, but it is likely that Atlanta would be ahead of them because they have the tiebreaker over Ultra. So if they match wins going... From here on out, Atlanta will be above Toronto. Texas plays New York to end this qualifier stage. That could throw a wrench into things. If Texas were to win that, we could have a a realistic four-way tie for the one seed, which would be crazy. That's still a week away, but just something to think about. Texas also plays Toronto this week. Again, a a big game for, for Optic if they can get that, but... Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah, Vegas continuing to show that they belong. The one thing I will say with Vegas, their schedule this stage is very easy. I do have them favored in their last three matches, LA Thieves, Seattle Surge, Carolina Royal Ravens. I don't expect them to win all three of those, but part of why they look so good is they have pretty soft competition. I believe their only loss this stage was to... I could be wrong about that, but they played one of those big four teams and lost, but everybody else very beatable and they have held serve so far. Then you get into a really interesting spot once you get closer to that eight seed cutoff line because you see LA Thieves play Vegas, LA Thieves play LA Gorillas later this stage, Carolina versus LAG is this week. So you have a lot of matches that can decidedly bury teams into the loser's bracket. Uh, or catapult them up into the conversation for winner's bracket. So again, not that it matters a ton if you get the seven or eight seed, because odds are you're going to lose to whoever you run into, but at least it gives you a shot at some kind of winner's bracket run. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, I also want to, one last nugget, and then we can move on. The What I have bottom four projected teams right now all started in winner's bracket at major one, and the four teams just above them were all the loser's bracket team at major one. So that would be fun to see an entire switch out of who starts in loser's bracket. I think maybe we'll see some shuffling before the end, but just interesting to see that much parity exists for those bottom eight teams, really. Yeah, agreed. And it, that's the thing, right? It's at the point where for those bottom eight, okay, we're ahead, but then we make a team change, so we jump up ahead, but then you make a team change, and then that's the thing. It's, it shows that they're interchangeable. And the thing is, we're almost at, okay, we've got all, we have, obviously have week four and week five, and then the major, but that's the halfway point of the season, right? Like, at a certain point, teams aren't going to want to make a ton of changes, right? If you're a team and, and you're not close, in the standings to making it to champs, are you really making a change for major four? 
Or, and, and even then, if you're somewhat competitive for that, but you're not quite there yet, do you still make the change for Major 4? There's an argument for, we'll just ride out with the people we have. We don't need to make the change, right? There's probably only one or two more periods of change for some of these teams. Beating the market and combined model results. Good week for us last week. I went 3-0, you went 2-1. and one. Nailed. I. You went for a higher degree of difficulty with your first pick. You nailed phase minus 1.5 plus 200. I subliners swept Miami. That wasn't even particularly close. Legion also swept Boston. We both had great calls there. And then I had to sweat out my thieves call. That would have that could have put me down to two and three as well. But then you had yeah. Then, then your loss was the Miami versus the subliners. But yeah, but very good week. We're getting back into the green on that. I think we're. I think we'll show the results later. But I think we're in green on pick two and three now. I think I'm not sure. Combine them all in place. Also not bad either. Phase map three, Vegas Legion, min, m, Legion money line minus one and a half, Texas money line. They for some reason didn't win map two. I'm not sure what happened there. I was watching map one and it looked close, but then for some reason I'm like, oh okay, they're just gonna pull away, and then they just randomly got destroyed map two, and then they just crushed it map three and four. So okay, LAG, yeah, that was rough. I have no idea what happened with Seattle there, and then Seattle money line map two. We both like Seattle there, and then they got us the win there. Miami map one, yeah, okay, they got swept by subliners. Subliners map one, map two. Phase one, map three. Toronto, the money line, map two. We liked them, but that didn't work. And then randomly, Thieves lost map three, but they could have won that, though. They lost one of the, I think they lost the defending ground, and that's what cost them. Match previews. So odds are Bet365 again. This week, obviously, we usually post this later in the week. This is now Monday. So if lines do change, that that's not our fault it happens. But again, Based on what we're seeing right now, get on some of these lines. Some of these lines have actually already moved from when we started filling out the PowerPoint here. Some of these are important. We'll let you know which ones those are. First match of the week, Friday afternoon, Boston versus Texas. Texas Optic minus 500 on the money line, minus 1.5, minus 188. 27.5 point favorites in the hard point, 1.5 round favorites in the search, and 1.5 round favorites in the control. Here's what we've got. I actually, weirdly, Boston, I'm not sure why exactly. Um, Boston and Hardpoint. Now, this is where it gets confusing. My model is confusing things sometimes. The model is saying that losing to Legion wasn't bad because they actually did outslay Legion in the Hardpoint. So the model is saying, hey, they're not actually bad at Hardpoint. Boston could, like be randomly competitive with optic and the hard point not and a little bit with the search obviously optic did lose the search to ravens but then map three texas should be able to take that but i the plus one and a half plus 137 that's not bad and they boston does have a shot at winning this especially if it goes to five and an optic is struggling in search what are your thoughts on this one yeah this one is a complete stay away for me if you look closely at the my value bar compared to market it is short on everything my i think the books just copied my numbers honestly it, it's ridiculous what's going on here but no to be honest yeah n no strong lean even stepping away from the model for a second texas has looked really good optic is uh, perfect so far if i'm not mistaken in these major two qualifiers boston has looked better like last week wasn't great losing to legion in a sweep but you compare major two qualifiers so far to what they did uh, during major one. And I think the improvement is still showing that Boston is a competitive, somewhat competitive team, but yeah, fully expect optic to win this one, likely a three, one, I'll say Boston wins something in one of those first three maps. I couldn't tell you what it is, but I think something will come through for them, but ultimately optic is a superior team and I think they can close it out in a map four. So that's where I lean now, but yeah, the optic to win minus one and a half at minus 188 is just a little too steep for my liking. So that's why I'm going to stay away on this one. But yeah, optic, if anything, for me. Yeah, I don't hate that. I don't hate Boston plus 27 and a half. Optic was a little shaky in that hard point against Cal Carolina. Next one, Phase versus Thieves. Phase a giant minus 1,000 on the money line. Minus 2.5 plus 137. Minus 47.5 points in the, in the hard point. 1.5 rounds in the search. 1.5 rounds in the control as well. My model is saying, okay, 
I don't see it, but okay. I still have phase favored, but only about sixty-ish percent. A lot of that is due to the is to do the search. My model is not liking my is not liking phase and search still. S still, it's not, and it's got some value on thieves in the in the hard point as well. They're not. My model is saying they're not completely done there yet. The minus two and a half is a little steep at minus 188. You can maybe parlay that with something else. But again, 47 and a half hard point, 47 and a half spread hard point. That's not bad at all. I think that might be a bit of worth to, to put something on that. What do you think? Yeah, I'm on the other side here with FaZe. It's hard to ignore what they did last week with two sweeps. One was against Rocker, which was somewhat expected, but yeah, they went up against the best team in the game in Toronto Ultra and beat them 3-0. The only map really that was close was the one you mentioned that you don't love them in, which is Search, uh, a round 11 win for FaZe on Rio. So yeah, I, I agree. I think FaZe is still somewhat susceptible in Search and Destroy, which is weird to say because there's so many, there's just a, an abundance of evidence over the last two, three years that FaZe dominate Search and Destroy. So again, maybe as we get further into the year, we'll see that dominance come through, but so far they are still beatable in that mode. And LA Thieves have shown quite a bit of improvement in Search and Destroy during the major two qualifiers. So I, I get why you're high on them there. The Thieves, I like that they have two series wins. I like that they're starting to win hard points. But again, if you look at who they've beaten and how they've beaten them, they took out Miami, who have yet to win a game this stage, and they just beat Minnesota, who also have not gotten a win yet. They took them to game five both times. That's not the worst thing that shows that Thieves are you know, relying on search and destroy, which is good to have a, a strength in that game mode. Their control has regressed a little bit. Um, Atlanta's is starting to find its rhythm. So I don't know. To me, the Atlanta price to sweep is a little enticing. Just seeing what they did last weekend, I think Thieves are roughly equivalent to Rocker. We just saw them squeak out a win versus that team. So to me, if anything, it's phase to sweep. Because I think they, they will take care of business in map one and map three. Really, the only thing I'm worried about is map two. Just because Thieves have looked decent as of late and FaZe still are showing some signs of weakness. But, but essentially, the plus 137 to sweep, by my thinking, is really just FaZe plus 137 map two. Just because I think they'll be okay in map one and map three. So that, that's where I'm going, but... I, I totally get the love for Thieves in map two, which you mentioned earlier. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. For me, it, it's hard to ignore uh, Atlanta phase after what they did. Yeah, agreed. Map three, fr uh, sorry, match three for Friday. Ravens versus LAG. Ravens minus 175 on the money line. Ravens minus one and a half plus 125. 15 and a half point favorites in the hard point. One and a half round favorites in the search and one and a half round favorites in the control. My model likes the LAG here. And again, this is one of the ones where I think my model kind of looks at... It, it's weird. My model is at some points fast to react, but also times slow to react. I think my model needs multiple data points to say, oh, okay, this is good or this is bad. And I think it's obviously the losing to Seattle part was bad for LAG. But I think my model's kind of, yeah, they're, they're still pretty good. And Carolina did lose to Optics. So I think my model's kind of saying, like, yeah, you know what? LAG isn't bad, if that makes sense. And I think that is part of it here. And I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards, I'm, I'm going with LAG here. Again, plus 175, pretty expensive price. But you have some value here on LAG in the hard. I have some, I have some value on LAG in the hard point. You don't, but I like that. And I don't hate the money line either. Yeah, that's how I see this game. How do you see this game? Yeah, for me, this is LAG or nothing, but I'm going to lean towards the nothing. <laughs> not to not to be boring and not to avoid picking anything, but I don't know. L LAG, I think, are in an interesting spot because they maybe overperformed during Major 1 and at Major 1, and they've come out of the gates very slow uh, for Major 2. They're 0-3, I believe. A couple winnable games and a couple that weren't. But, but Ravens have looked better. I don't know. To me, these teams are similar, but the fact that Ravens are 
looking a little better as of late, has inflated their price maybe a little too much. Um, they are a competitive hard point team, Ravens that is. They've been pretty competitive throughout the year, um, including recently. The big thing with Ravens is they are improving search and destroy quite a bit, like LA Thieves, uh, who we just talked about. Their search is getting better, so even though my numbers say there's maybe value on LAG Map 2 at even money, I don't know. Even to me seems about dead on. I don't know. LAG are a mediocre search team. Carolina are a below average team that is improving. I think at the end of the day, that equals roughly 50-50 in that game mode. So yeah, I, I think these teams likely split hard points if we get two of them. So a lot of that comes down to control, where I give a slight edge to Gorillas, but really that's basically a toss-up as well. You add all that up, to me, yeah, LAG Moneyline maybe is in consideration. I just think these teams are very similar. So the fact that you're getting a plus 125 for the Gorillas is pretty good value. But all in all, just the way these teams are trending right now, Carolina up, LAG down, that just leaves it as a stay away for me. Okay. Makes sense. Now, LAG plays again. The dreaded Friday-Saturday scheduling quirk that continues to exist for some reason. Subliners. Market catching up to the minus 1,600 on the money line. Minus 2.5, plus 100. Minus 40 and a half, minus 120, a 40 and a half point spread in the hard point, two and a half round spread in the search, and one and a half round spread in the control. I've got basically market here. I actually have subliners slightly under, I think, a 45% chance of the sweep. It's weird. We keep talking, like, all these sweeps keep happening, and I feel like they're pushing up the odds. I think they're now thinking everybody's going to think a sweep happens, and they're pushing up, up and up the odds of the sweeps. But I'm like, it's not, and this is what I said in the first part, it's not the ones you would expect. You don't expect this sweep. You expect this sweep, but you don't expect Seattle to sweep LAG. You expect this one, but you don't expect FaZe to sweep Toronto, right? This is a, cl a classic example of people think it's a sweep when it's not a sweep. LAG wins one one round, one map, right? I weirdly like LAG and Hardpoint. Again, maybe after the next game this will change. I don't know, but this is this is what I got. I, this game is unbettable for me, and I think it's unbettable for you as well. Yeah, just copy and paste what I said about LAG from the last match. Yeah, even harder, the fact that they have to go back-to-back -back Friday, Saturday with basically no time to prepare for New York, and this is New York's first match of the weekend. So yeah, LAG is in a tough spot here. Again, my numbers like them, mostly in hard point, but again, the way these teams are trending, right? I don't want to step in front of New York right now. They look automatic in just about every game mode. LA Gorillas are sliding decently. So again, just a pass for me. Don't be surprised if LA Gorillas take a map off of New York, but man, New York are just on a mission, it seems to go 7-0 and or something. Like, they, they look unbeatable right now. So just an avoid for me. Yeah, just, just a pass. Watch it, don't watch it, whatever you want to do. But, but yeah, I'm staying away from this one as well. Saturday match two. This one's a lot closer. Rocker minus 200 on the money line, minus 1.5, minus 120. 27.5 point favorite in the hard point. One and a half round underdog actually in the search. That's interesting. And then one and a half round favorite in the control. I like Seattle here. I've got significant value on Seattle money line. I've got some value on Seattle plus one and a half. I, I really I, I like Seattle a little bit in the hard point. I think twenty seven and a half is a pretty big number. It's I think especially in a game like this, I think that's totally fine to play. And uh, yeah, I'd play Seattle here if you're playing anything. What do you think? Are you on either side here? Or are you just your models are a bit more ambiguous on this game. What do you have? Yeah, it's a little split, but I'll side with you and the Seattle Surge in this one. They did get a sweep over LAG last week. That was a little unexpected. I don't know if they've solved their hard point issue though. They beat LAG by six, and LAG is not that impressive at hard point. So I think TBD on how good Seattle is in hard point. I know Rocker are pretty solid in hard point though. So that's what makes it iffy on like the Seattle plus one and a half, because I think a rocker three one is pretty likely just considering the fact that rocker cannot win a search right now. They, 
They have a couple wins this qualifier, but it is bad for them, especially game fives. Obviously, they haven't won a series yet. They're 0-5. Their game fives are horrible. Uh, And to me, that just points to, like, they just need to work on search and destroy uh, quite a bit. And Seattle is actually a decent search team. So if Minnesota win, I think it's a 3-1. They avoid that second search and destroy and just do it with hard point and control. But to me, the Seattle plus 150, that could be playable. I think Seattle dominate the searches if we get two of them. And I think they can get one of the hard points or the control. I would probably bet on one of the hard points, even though they did show an improvement in control last weekend. But yeah, this is a tough one. This <laughs> These teams are not looking great. The loser is almost assuredly in the loser's bracket to start major two. But, but yeah, I'll side with you in the Seattle surge, just going off of good vibes from last weekend. Yeah, agreed. Last game on Saturday, FaZe versus Breach. FaZe, again, another minus 1,600 on the money line. The books really liked the Soup of Toronto there. Minus 2.5, plus 100. Minus 37.5, 37.5 point favorites in the hard point. 2.5 round favorites in the search. And 1.5 round favorites shaded pretty heavily in the control there. Again, I'm lower on FaZe. I'm not, my model's not seeing it. Okay, you beat Minnesota. Congrats on that. And you swept Ultra. Okay, but Ultra's been showing a little weaker the last couple of weeks. I see quite significant value on the search, right? You're giving me two and a half rounds against FaZe. I think I might take that. And also some value on the control on the search there as well. Control, yeah, no, that's not happening. But everywhere else, though, I'm a bit lower on that market on FaZe in both Hardpoint and Search. What are your thoughts on this one? Are you... Are you, are you, is this again is this another sweep that people think is going to be a sweep and is a sweep or, or not is that's what your model not even really you're still not the highest on them there yeah to me it's this is pretty on market the odds of a sweep to me is about a 50 50 and atlanta is priced in at even money so that one is pretty spot on for me i don't know i again a stay away but mostly because i like phase versus la thieves more those prices are a little better and to me thieves and boston are roughly interchangeable right now so i'd just rather take atlanta to sweep at plus 137 than at even money in this one so that's why this one's mostly a stay away for me also these teams have played before this year if you remember First match of the season back in December, this was the match. Boston took it to a map five and almost won. And that was with a lineup that a lot of people, I think, would consider inferior to the one that they have now. Although Boston did get swept last weekend, they played a pretty good Legion team, and a couple of those maps were very close. To me, Boston's stock didn't go up or down that much last week, even with the 3-0 loss. Phase though, I don't know. I can't discredit that Toronto sweep. That was huge. And the fact that they swept Rocker is, that's what good teams do. They take care of business against inferior teams. And Phase finally showed that, hey, we can compete with Ultra. I still, in a series head-to-head, would have Toronto favored over Phase. I don't think we saw enough from Phase to, to justify being the best team in the game now. But yeah, again, with this Boston team, I, I think they're good enough to maybe pull one map, but a 3-1 seems very likely, and if FaZe look what, like what they did last week, uh, a sweep is very much in the cards, so that's where I lean with this. Yeah, agree with that. Moving on to Sunday, Thieves versus Legion. Legion is, I guess, nominally the favorite in this game now, but basically everything's a pick. Legion, minus 120 in the money line, Minus one and a half plus 175 for Legion. Not a lot of value there. 12 and a half point favorites in the hard point. Minus basically dead even in the search. And plus, and Thieves is favorites in the control, which is weird because they lost the most recent control they played against Minnesota. But whatever, they are still favorited against Legion there. I have pretty substantial value on legion here i jumped on this last night i think i got legion at a much better price i think i had the minus one and a half at plus 200 i like legion in the hard point i like legion in the control not so much in the search but they could pull that off as well i think i'm not sure why thieves is this high but 
Legion is a legitimate team, and I'm not sure if FaZe is a fully legitimate team or just a legitimate team. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm with you on Vegas again. They seem to be value every week, and I think the markets are maybe just scared to put more aggressive prices on the Legion just because of maybe the name, right? I don't think Vegas Legion has ever been this good. Like, to me, they're the fifth best team in the game behind those top four. I still lump them in with the likes of LA Thebes and Boston and whoever else you want, but I don't, they are, to me, they're separating themselves somewhat. They've beat three teams already this qualifier stage that are were roughly comparable to them. They've been solid in hardpoint all year. Thieves have been improving, but I still really like Vegas in map one. Map two and map three is where I get a little bit of hesitation. Thieves are red hot in search and destroy. I think Vegas have a better shot than what I show in map three, just because, I don't know, th- Thieves, my numbers are high on Thieves map three because they that was their one game mode they were decent at during major one but they lost everything else, and they lost just about every series they played because of that. But so far with this new lineup, like, Thieves are getting wins, but their control is worse. So it was a good trade-off if you're LA Thieves, but I think Vegas, minus one and a half, I wouldn't be scared of. But to me, the map one just jumps out. Thieves are improving in hardpoint, I get that, but Legion, I think, are still a step above them in that mode. To take 12 and a half points, I think it is. That's really not much whatsoever. Fingers crossed that they win by 13. But but yeah, Eileen Vegas, probably a 3-1 here. And just, they keep it rolling. I, I think they're hot, and I like them quite a bit. So, give me Legion. Yeah, I, we're on Legion here. Carolina versus Miami. Carolina minus 125 on the money line. Minus one and a half plus 175. Ten and a half point favorites in the hard point. One and a half round favorites in the search. And one, uh, basically, an underdog in the control, but basically even. Yeah, I don't know why this line is this way. I'm Now, you're on the opposite side of me here. I'm massively on Carolina. My model is completely out on Miami. It's saying they're horrible. And that being said, the last time it said that, they won. But no, my model is fully on, on Carolina here. And just basically, I've got value on Carolina in basically every mode, the minus one and a half, the money line itself. The money line shouldn't even be close. Yeah, what's your thoughts on this one? My thoughts are my model is slow to react on Miami, even though it shows value on map two, map three, money line, plus one and a half. To me, it's a pass, and I'm not going to go completely on the other side with Ravens just because, again, I think they're just getting inflated a little too much just based on the fact that they have a series win this qualifier stage, they've been competitive, they fought pretty hard at the Major 1. They're trending up with this new lineup, and Miami is very much not with their new lineup. They've had a couple close losses. I think maybe they've had some bad luck. But I get why Carolina is favored, and I think if I was setting the line myself, I would have them favored. My model seems to think that Miami should still be the favorites, but again, they're just, they're not doing it this stage. They have regressed in pretty much every game mode, and close losses are still losses at the end of the day. To me, yeah, I I expect a Ravens win just based on how Miami is looking But if you are Miami, I think this is a good series for you to bounce back and get a win, even though you are likely locked up into the loser's bracket. I think technically they still could make it, even though they are 0-5. But yeah, this is one you got to have, because if if you're not beating Carolina and you're not beating the teams that you've already played, good luck winning the rest of the year. I, I really think Miami should maybe switch back to the lineup they had during Major 1, or even throw Real in the mix now. They signed him, ex-Royal Raven player. They have some options because they have so many players on their team, but for some reason they keep rolling out the same lineup we've seen them lose five times in a row with. Curious to see if maybe news breaks this week that Miami is making a roster change, and we're a little late to that. But but yeah, I agree. I think Ravens have a good shot to win this, so I, I don't hate your pick with that at all. Fair, yeah. And last but not least, the last match of the weekend, Optic versus Toronto Ultra. This is, I think, their only match of the weekend, actually. They're minus 300 on the money line. One and a half round favorites, one and a half uh, map favorites, 22 and a half points 
a favorite in the in the hard point, one and a half round favorites in the search, and one and a half round favorite in the control, but it's shaded to even there in the control. I weirdly like Optic, and I am very seriously considering, I think I actually did bet Optic already here. Yeah, the thing is, you're giving me plus 225 on something that I think is about even, and it actually, they're two top five teams, and then this is what I said earlier in the year, right? Toronto was the most dominant team initially. They were extremely dominant for a while right out the gate. Optic hasn't had that yet. And uh, Toronto has looked a little worse the last couple of weeks. They lost to Phase 3-0. They didn't look amazing against against Las Vegas. I think they played someone else before Vegas that they didn't look amazing against as well. Then they take someone to a Game 5. Minnesota, they took Minnesota to a Game 5, right? So... There have been a couple of matches where Trump, where where Toronto has not looked the best, and I think I think that's what the model is picking up on. And I got a, I've got this as 50-50, and you're giving me 50-50 on a team, and I've got a 50-50, and you're giving me plus 225 and and minus 120 for plus one and a half maps. I'm taking that every day, so I'm on optic here. What's your thoughts on this? Yeah, a really interesting game when you look at the just map by map breakdown because I I very much expect Toronto to win and I expect them to win in their typical 3-1 fashion uh, or even sweep. I could see that as well. But I think Optic Map 3 is a very good value. And this was something I talked about last week with Phase versus Ultra. Toronto was the favorite or or I'm sorry, Phase was a favorite in Map 3, but I think the books were a little scared to make that a more aggressive price. It was very much just like a 50-50. This match, similar, right? Like, to me, Optic are a better control team. Your numbers say that as well. Yet, they're shading Toronto as a favorite because I think they're a little... They're they're maybe a little nervous that, yeah, Toronto are still the best team in the game. They just haven't won controls. So, we're still going to price them as the favorite, even though evidence has shown otherwise. And... One thing with Toronto, and it's, it is maybe one of two things they could work on moving forward. Control map set. Like, on Karachi, they're 6-1 and one in control. On the other two maps combined, they are 4-5. and five. Just ban Karachi, and you're playing a Toronto team that has more losses than wins on those other maps. And if you look at Optic on those same maps, Optic is very good at Karachi as well. But if you play High Rise or Invasion, you are 5-3 and three to their 4-5. and five. So I think if Optic is smart, they will ban Karachi, even though they love to play it. If they don't, I fear that we're going to play Karachi and Toronto are very live to win that. So Optic, if you're listening, ban Karachi control. The other thing being a bit of an issue for Toronto at the moment is the hard point and the search and destroy map sets, right? We knew search... They were probably going to take a step back in just because Skid Row Search and Destroy got banned. They were 4-0 and on that map. No one was even close to them. So you take that out and they look human on the rest of the map set. And then with Hardpoint, it was the opposite. We, <laughs> You took out a, a Terminal Hardpoint, which was their only loss. They were undefeated. You add in Rio. They have a loss on Rio now. FaZe just beat them in a Karachi last week. I don't know, their veto process is maybe got to figure itself out, and they just maybe need more reps on some of the maps they haven't played quite as much. But yeah, I still think Optic Map 3 is a great value. But that being said, at the end of the day, you give me four maps, I think Toronto take three of them. So I expect Toronto to bounce back and win, but Optic put up a fight, I'll give them that. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a good series. I'm pretty excited for this on Sunday night. I think it could be a very good series, and I, I, I can't wait to see this one. So pretty excited for that. Beating the market and combined model plays. So this is, again, yep, see, as I mentioned, we are above 500 on the second pick. Now we just got to get this pick up. But we're both doing minus 120, so it's going to take a bit more to get there. But again, pick number three, we're there. We're getting there slowly. We're slowly climbing our way back. I've got Seattle plus one and a half versus Minnesota. I like that. I've got, I'm just going straight up v- Legion Moneyline versus Thieves. And then I'm also taking Optic plus one and a half versus Toronto. I'm going all 120s this week, minus 120s. See how that works out. 
you've got the minus legion minus 12 and a half plus 120 versus thieves i will say that we are going by we are going by bet365 pricing but before we record this i did see that on bavada it is legion actually plus three and a half map one it's funny plus three and a half is minus 115 and legion is minus 120 to win map one so I uh, this sometimes weird things happen in, in esports spreads and that's one of them when you can get a team at a lower odds to have you can get a better odd at plus to get to have a spread of plus three and a half in a map rather than just to win the map outright go figure and then you've got optic map three in the control versus toronto toronto has struggled in control recently and then you've got phase with the sweep against los angeles thieves and then the combined model plays we are all over lag apparently on friday and on Saturday, too, apparently. And we like Seattle. Seattle there on Saturday. And then we've got... We're all over Legion again on Sunday. And then on Texas. And on, on, on the control on Sunday as well. We will be back here with one more week left in Major 2. We've got Week 5 preview. That will come out next Thursday. This one's going to be a bit early, but we'll be back to our regular recording schedule next week. Stick around for next week. We'll do that. And then after that, we're back for Major major 2. We're just two weeks away from Major 2. So, yeah, sit tight, and, and we're almost halfway through the season, which is crazy. It's just, it feels like the season barely started already, and we're already almost halfway done. So, yeah. All right. See you, everybody. See you next week.